welcome to Microfiche Microphone. I'm Micah, and on this channel we look at microfiche from the past, old newspaper articles in the public domain. We look at them with our modern eyes, our modern perspective, and see what we can learn from them. So on this microfiche time capsule, we are looking at the Ladies Home Journal from May 1884. And we are continuing our series on what women want to know. I believe this is number four. Um, I will correct myself if I'm wrong, but uh, actually it's May, so it must be number five. Moving on. Uh, so basically this is just a hodgepodge little gathering of some random advice, like household kind of advice for different people. Uh, a little bit of philosophy thrown in there, a little bit of child rearing, but it's general advice. This one I believe is a little bit more society and a little bit less household. So I'm interested to see what they have to say. So just from glancing at it, I mean, and let's read it for real. Queen Victoria is said to look older than before her illness. Her hair is whitening and she will soon be called venerable. Venerable, huh? You know, it's not a word we use a lot today, so I'm gonna look it up really quick just to be sure that I know what it means. Accorded a great deal of respect, especially because of age, wisdom, or character. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. A venerable, huh? Eh, sure, why not? Queen Victoria. I feel like she should have been given respect because she was the Queen of England. But hey, <laughs> you want to give her respect because she's old? Sure. The president's little daughter, Nellie, is 10 years old. She is dressed very simply and she is attended by a stout, capable Irish girl. I feel like that's not terribly relevant, however, they didn't say who the president was, so um, I don't know off the top of my head who was the president of the U.S. in 1884. Uh, Chester Allen Arthur. So apparently he had a ten-year-old daughter, Nellie. Okay, sure. <laughs> Random. That's very random. Okay, moving on. The Washington Post says the wives of of very many congressmen are lamentably ignorant. It is no wonder. So are their husbands. <laughs> That's so mean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, like, this is some serious poking fun at the government. I, I wasn't really expecting that. I thought they were a little more, like, putting people up on a pedestal back then, but apparently not. <laughs> so... They're calling all the congressmen lamentably ignorant. <laughs> oh, I, I kind of like this because it is a defense from the side of the Ladies Home Journal, which specifically is targeted at women. And the article from the Post was talking about the wives of the congressmen being lamentably ignorant. And so I feel like this is a direct like attack, a, a direct uh, response to that where they say, well, if the women are ignorant, so are the men, you know? You got a point there. I mean, <laughs> oh, I just thought that was funny. In an industrial community like ours, late parties are absurd and destructive. When people can lie abed until noon, they may sit up until 2 a.m. with no very material injury. It is far otherwise when men who must be downtown by nine with mothers who ought to see their children off to school. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's true. It is an issue, actually, in particular communities that they tend to have very late night parties. But yeah, it is very hard to get up the next morning if you're just, if you need to go to work or, yeah. So there are some areas and some communities that have, like, rules about that. You have to be quiet after a certain hour. Uh, I don't know what it is in general. Where I live, for example, there's a rule that it needs to be quiet after 10 p.m. Um, so you can't have any late, loud parties after that. I mean, you can have loud parties before that, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just think that's an interesting take on it. It's like, um, the men have to be downtown by nine. Are, are they catering the people in the city, I guess? And the mothers who ought to see their children off to school, or are they just assuming your children are going to get themselves off to school? Or do they not have children? I mean, not everybody does, so I'm just saying. It's a little bit presumptuous to say that, you know, it, because it says the men who ought to be downtown by nine, but then instead of saying the women, it says the mothers. So 
now you're being overly specific. You know, if you could have just said the women and made it a similar statement as to their men's statement, but like instead they said, oh, but the mothers, because I guess, you know, other women aren't real women. I don't know, like that, it's, it's a little bit, <sighs> I don't know what to call this. Is there a term for being discriminatory against people who aren't mothers? Whatever if that term that would be, this is it. <laughs> so it's it's a little bit discriminatory. I'll just say discriminatory because that's my general term here. The use of slang is becoming unbearable. Girls are unable to express themselves in standard language and slang is growing more and more vulgar. It used to have the merit of a little wit, even if a poor kind, but now it is often a meaningless jingle. And worse, it often carries a double meaning unknown to the speaker, which draws a smile, often disgust, to the face of every man present. <sighs> well, I don't think anybody likes the slang of the youth. It tends to be something that comes and goes very quickly, and then changes the next generation because they don't want to use the old silly words that their parents used. So, um, it is a sign of rebellion. Yeah, It's a very small rebellion, but it is still rebellious yeah and carrying a double meaning unknown to the speaker yeah uh, well sometimes but I don't feel like that's a general thing today anyway I, I don't feel like this is a new thing I think this is something that has always been there and it's just something every generation has to deal with the slang of the youth <laughs> you know get over it it's it's just part of life yeah <laughs> It's coming unbearable, huh? To who? The Queen of Saxony is said to be a model housekeeper. She excels in the making of jam, and all of the cupboards in the palace are full of confections prepared by her own hands. But unfortunately, there are no children to eat them. The Queen is of a frugal turn of mind, keeps her own household accounts, which she balances every day, and will not suffer even that two candles shall burn where one will suffice. Well, I like that. I like that they are showing a little bit of culture and, and like saying, hey, look at this person that people who get the newspaper are very unlikely to have ever met. I It does bother me a little bit, as once again that discrimination against women who are not mothers, yeah, is still there. There are no children. Unfortunately, there are no children to eat them. Who says that she wanted children? <laughs> you know, is she even trying to have children? I don't know. I, I, I have to look this one up too. So who is the Queen of Saxony in 1884? This is Carola of Vasa. Queen of Saxony. Yeah, Queen Carola was the wife of King Albert of Saxony and the last Queen of Saxony. And she was born in 1833 in Vienna, Austria. Okay, so these activities increased further after her husband ascended the Saxon throne on October 29, 1873. Yeah, that sounds right. That's uh, like 10 years before this. She's also instrumental in establishing several organizations to provide training for a growing workforce due to an increase in industrialization. Let's see, she was born in 33 though, so she was already 40 when he ascended the throne. So the fact that she didn't have children then, like, and then in 1884, she was kind of like in 1884, she was 51. Like the time has kind of passed for her to have children um, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. So Queen Carola is often credited for contributing to the increased professional independence of women. Carola was widowed in 1903 and retired to her country home in Strelin, Kingdom of Saxony, now Stretzlin, Poland. Poland. Appearing in public only occasionally, she continued working with several of her patronages, but most were passed on to the new queen. Living a relatively simple life in Strelin, the Dowager Queen spent several years working on and constantly revising her will, which would end up giving her large part of her estate to charity. And she eventually died of result of diabetes um, in 1907. Well, gee, she lived a long life. And she was buried in Dresden, uh, which is in Saxony. So, makes sense to me. Um did a lot of charitable work, she worked with military care. Like honestly, you're talking about this woman and so of all the things that she does, she's queen, queen of Saxony. Okay, hang on, uh, Carola and Johan never had children. So between 1853 and 1860, Carola had 10 miscarriages. I'm sorry, this pisses me off. So they clearly were trying, and she was unable to carry a baby to term. And because of that, 
the, he says she's being criticized by the Ladies Home Journal. Unfortunately, there are no children to eat them. So the fact that she likes to make jam and like, you know, bake cookies and things, that's nice. But you said nothing, nothing about her charitable work, which I think was much, much bigger deal than the fact that she can make jam. Ugh, I'm sorry, this frustrates me so much because Corolla was obviously an amazing woman who just did tons and tried so hard to have kids eventually gave up because she had so many miscarriages. I can relate to that. I, well, I not relate to that, but I can understand that. I can understand that she would want to give up. Um, I think I would have too. Oh, it's so tragic. And just like her model housekeeper and she balances her own accounts. <sighs> and, and provided food and medical care for wounded soldiers. Hmm? Hmm? S founded several hospitals and nursing schools. Awarded several orders, including the Saxon Order of Sidonia and the Prussian Order of Louisa. Ugh. I'm sorry. This lady is clearly an amazing, amazing person who did a lot of good in her life. And all you care about is whether or not she knows how to make jam. Ugh. Okay, moving on. Um, try not to get too frustrated, but geez, that's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Okay. For upholstery purposes, is that jutes? Or at a low ebb? What is that? Uh, for upholstery purposes, jutes are at a low ebb. The printed and embossed plushes used to a small extent last season were generally objected to as the embossing soon crushes down and wears off. Silk and wool delaines are favorite materials for furniture covering. Raw silk, except for very cheap work, is superseded by the silk and wool goods. Red effects are generally preferred and the most popular tints are crimson, ruby, and maroon. Thanks? Kind of useless information. Because uh, you telling me what is fashionable right now isn't necessarily going to dictate what I buy. I still don't know what jutes are. I'm gonna re-look back jutes upholstery. Okay, it's kind of like a canvas, like a, like a very heavy linen. Okay, it's kind of like the, the rough material you would get on a, on a chair. It's, it's slightly like large weave. I think that's the best way to describe it. And apparently they are going out of fashion at this time. Moving on. Perhaps your little ones suffer from chillblains. If so, use the following. Two teaspoonfuls of powdered muriate of ammonia. Oh, geez. Dissolved in one pint of water. Rub well on the feet, nights and mornings. Never let a chillblain become a sore, but tend to it as soon as the painful itching commences. This is also a sure cure for chapped hands, toughening the skin against exposure, yet rendering it soft as velvet. If it smarts too badly on the hands, reduce it. Okay, I think chillblains, if I'm not mistaken, is actually frostbite. Painful inflammation of small blood vessels in your skin that occur in response to repeated exposure to cold, but not freezing air. Also known as pernio, chillblains can cause itching, red patches, swelling, and blistering on your hands and feet. Okay, so it's not quite frostbite. It's like a step before frostbite. Chillblains usually clear up within one to three weeks, especially if the weather gets warmer. You may have reoccurrences seasonally for years. Treatment involves protecting yourself from the cold using lotions to ease the symptoms. Chillblains don't usually result in permanent injury, but the condition can lead to infection, which may cause severe damage if left untreated. The best approach to chillblains is to avoid developing them by limiting your exposure to cold, dressing warmly, and covering exposed skin. Okay, so actually the use of the lotion to ease symptoms is actually a real thing. Um, I actually got the information on the chillblains from the mayoclinic.org. I think that's a fairly reliable source. All right. Uh, so I feel like it's less relevant to the everyday life today. Um, I'm a bit disappointed today. In the past, I've been positively surprised that it's been so very, very positive. But like, of all the amazing things Queen Victoria did, all they're talking about is her hair whitening. All of the amazing things Corolla of Saxony did, 
and the, all they're talking about is how well she makes jam. You know, I feel like even women's magazines at the time perpetuated the stereotypes of the day. And I think that's really sad. It's just really too bad. Like, they, it could be a lot better, but instead it's just... Uh, <sighs> And I'm very frustrated about Corolla of Saxony because that woman was clearly amazing. I'm like, I now want to read her biography because she sounds amazing. I would love to be friends with her, but like, let's just point out the things that she has trouble with, you know, that she had trouble having children and they didn't mention why. They didn't mention that she had multiple miscarriages, so she clearly was trying to have children. So you couldn't fault her for making the effort, but her body just wasn't going to do it. And so they never had children. And you can't blame her. Uh, you know, because <laughs> the way they were talking, it sounded like... <sighs> it sounded like they weren't trying. I don't know, though. Maybe I'm reading something into it, but... Um, I just felt like that that was very inappropriate. There's some medical advice that was decent this time. Um, we have some criticism of the society in general using slang and then people staying up at all hours having loud parties. I get that. Uh, yeah, I have mixed feelings on this one. I really, really wish that they had written an, a really good, well-researched article on Corolla of Saxony. Or on Queen Victoria, for that matter. They were both specifically named. Yeah. So, that's my opinion this time. I'm a bit disappointed. I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, usually it's better than this, so... Maybe next time it will be. But, I hope you enjoyed it e anyway, and learned a little bit about history. And, uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.